almost there. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. That wasn't, uh, wasn't too far. You sure this is it? It's what the map says. Hmm. I don't know. I expected it to be like more jungly, I guess. You sure it's right here? Yeah. Right there. If you say so. I think I see an old Land Rover down there. The Pan American Highway is the longest drivable line on the map. But there's a catch. Between Panama and Colombia, there is no road. There exists only the impenetrable Darien National Forest. This area of land has become the most dangerous migration route in the world. This roadless, lawless stretch of terrain is frequented by cartel drug runners, human traffickers, and northbound illegal immigrants. Not exactly the things we're looking to find. The documented vehicle attempts are few, the successes even fewer, and backed by militaries, governments, bottomless budgets, and indigenous tribes. However alluring the mysteries of an unconquered terrain, we'll be crossing the Darien at sea. This episode is a crescendo that begins with the process of crossing the Darien Gap and ends at the most exciting off-road route we've driven on four wheels. Let's get into it. If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No for something to write books about, something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of the unknown insanity, something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. I'm Matthew. And I'm Stacy. And this is Toyota World Runners, proudly presented by West Can Overland, off-road and design. So we tried to do laundry at the truck stop because they offer laundry, but they didn't tell us that the dryer is broken. Chris. Oh man, the joys of language barriers. Yep, that's what we listened to all last night. I've heard you're not a real overlander until you can't do a truck stop, so there you go. We have one day to get to Panama City to complete our mandatory police inspection one week before our vehicle gets loaded on the ship. We made it to Panama City. Now, it's currently 6 a.m and we have to go get a police inspection on our vehicle. Cool. 6 a.m. weather report. Can you see how the lens is all foggy? <laughs> it's because it's 30 degrees and it's like 80% humidity at 6 a.m. And we had our air conditioning blast. Today. Hence why we're in a hotel. <laughs> had to get this guy washed yesterday, make him all pretty for the police. And it looks like we're in like a music video. It's all foggy and stuff. Look at those lights. All right. Wow. Off to Overland Embassy. It's crazy. I messaged them like three years ago saying like <laughs> how much is shipping, blah, 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 when we were first planning this trip before COVID. So like, wow, it's crazy to actually be finally going there. Yeah. It's very surreal to even be in Panama. Yeah. We've come so far. Yeah. It's cool. A couple stops on the way. And that is so sick. A cavalry blue troopy. Rad. Okay. Another troopy. Another troopy. Okay. Oh, we got a Defender 130. 
Right there. Check it out. Wow. Cool. Loading bay. Loading your vehicle into a shipping container to cross to another continent is a completely surreal experience. Definitely the greatest surrender experiment we've done thus far. A huge thanks to Overland Embassy for making the Panama side of this experience very easy. If you're half as stoked as we are to explore a new continent together, then hit that like button and smash subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it really does help us out. What a relief. The truck showed up on the right continent at the right port. We didn't realize how much we would miss these four walls on big tires that we call a home and the safety that it provides. That safety was definitely tested as backpackers in Cartagena. Yes, we're back. Had the dehumidifier at the back too. And that one's full. Just filling up water. Got gas, first time in Colombia. We're full. <laughs> We're so full. We're, we're full of gas, we're full of water, and we're full of excitement. Yeah. Despite almost being stabbed last night, we are... <laughs> <laughs> we are in good spirits. While we did almost lose our lives to a petty thief in Cartagena, we're tearing that page out of our story. To leave only the memories of the amazing people and the amazing food that we experienced. Let me remind you that it's been summer for us for almost 10 months and we are pointing our compass towards some cooler weather. But Colombia is a big country, so that's going to take a couple days. Good day. Hello. Good morning from a small town southeast of Cartagena. We are not camping, nope. clearly, <laughs> and there's a good reason for that. Yep, first one is, it's way too hot. It's insanely hot. Unbearably and, hot. And we are recovering from a pretty big scare that we had in Cartagena, yeah, which we will tell you about. Uh, but we have to check out of this place. It's also really loud, <laughs> so we're gonna check out and we'll tell you about it at our next spot. Quanto? <laughs> no, gracias. Perfecto, quanto para uno? Dos. Once mil. Once mil. ¿Qué es esto? Miel pura. Miel pura, ¿qué es esto? No, miel, miel. Oh, we already have honey. Miel, miel. Oh, miel, yo, yo tengo mucho miel, lo siento. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm supposed to give. Wait, how much did you say? You didn't really say. How much? Dos más? <laughs> Amazing. We got watermelon, orange juice, and <laughs> two freaking arepa con nuevos for uh, three bucks. Still at sea level, and still relaxing, rattled nerves, we opted for another cheap hotel. So basically we were doing everything wrong. We were walking late at night in a sketchy area. We were right outside our hostel, which we booked to try and save money. And two guys pull up on a motorcycle, cut us off. Guy on the back jumps off with a big kitchen knife above his head and starts coming at us before he could even say anything. 
I just scream at him like, get back, mother. I immediately blacked out from fear because as soon as I saw the knife, I was just gone. So I, my instinct was to run. He starts backing up. Stacy runs and he tries chasing her with the knife. He swung at both of us and I started chasing him and I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs in like the scariest voice that I can and it, it like woke the neighbors up and all of a sudden there's like alarms going off in the houses and I don't even know how long the whole thing lasted but played like ring around the rosy with him and then eventually they jumped on their bike and took off. Clearly once the surrounding houses, one being our hostel, which was right behind us, once they heard the blood curdling screams coming from us, they set off the alarms, which I guess is normal <laughs> in that area. And that scared them away. The reality is that there's dangerous parts of every city, whether it's Colombia or the United States or even Canada, this happens all over the world. And we made the mistake of not listening to the locals and walking through a dangerous area at around midnight. Luckily nothing happened and it was a scary lesson to to learn. We're really happy to be back in the truck and not be backpackers again. Today, if all goes well, we will finally be out of the scorching, oppressive oven. <laughs> <laughs> This remote village is called Momposh, a town seemingly frozen in time. It's actually on an island formed by tributaries of the Magdalena River. came close to all three. from our first camp in Colombia, which was less than glamorous. Camped in this field last night outside the National Park. We haven't really caught a break <laughs> since we've been in South America. Last night, flying up this beautiful canyon, flying, yes, with the drone, uh, I hit a power line. And we couldn't find the drone last night. So we're going back to look and just praying Praying that the drone is okay, because that is not a hurdle we want to overcome. No, we're gonna find it. We're gonna go find him. And then we're gonna find the cool stuff that we've been looking for. <laughs> We found it. We found it. Stacy found it. Oh my gosh. This is very exciting, but we're gonna have to test if he still works. So what happened is it hit those power lines. Oh, sorry, hang on. There you go. So it hit those power lines and fell like 60 feet and somehow, thankfully, landed in grass. Yeah, it, it does have a couple new dents, which makes me think it might have hit a rock on its way down. Um, 
but it also like when it hit the power lines it immediately lost transmission i don't know if those lines would have like electrocuted it hopefully it didn't fry like the computer or something we're gonna clean them off and we're gonna find out right now if, if he's still gonna work praying praying we are praying <laughs> oh, oh, this is my. almost a good sign. Oh my gosh. Gimbal's facing the right way. Yep. Let's let's see if the camera works. Okay. This is a warrior drone. <laughs> yeah, this is literally like you have been through so much. Oh, that is incredible. That is literally incredible. Yeah. The freaking camera works, everything works. Wow. I guess we'll have to try and take off. Our propellers are a little wet. We, yeah. have, we have some extra propellers though. Definitely need to swap some propellers. That is amazing. After over 10 days of being in Colombia, I can't tell you how good it feels to finally be setting up our first night at camp. You all remember from Mexico how we set up chairs? Wheel it around a little bit and eventually just get it in the right spot and boom. Last one's a little tight. Ta da! Now we're camping. And that was uh, baby <laughs> yeah. number three. <laughs> Concerto in uh, Z minor. <laughs> in Zippy Zap minor. Tonight we have a Mexican fried rice with a Canadian twist. This is honestly one of our one of our favorites. Just fried rice, baby. Yeah. Eggs and veggies and super fresh. You know, it's a nice break from all the <laughs> corn and wheat you get in Central and South America. It's nice to get some fresh vegetables. We're feeling grateful for the cool mountain air and the silence of this canyon. We're also grateful that we're the only ones camping in this area. This unique natural area is called Los Estoraques. It is one of the smallest preserved areas in Colombia. This place will stimulate your imagination as you discover animal figures, people, and objects that have been sculpted from thousands of years of erosion by water and wind. It's a pretty neat jigsaw puzzle to try and put together.
much cooler in here. This is crazy. I wonder if getting can tell like the the movie was like made here or like based around this area. Maybe. Those places like you just really can't explain. <laughs> no. I went to this this unique natural area and it was just like a bunch of melted dirt and weird patterns. But like, you'd have to be there to really understand. <laughs> what do you think he's digging for? I don't know. Playa de Belén directly translates to Beach of Bethlehem. This charming mountain town is one of Colombia's best preserved 19th century pueblos. Del Sol, and we're about to embark on our first kind of off-roady adventure. I'm really excited for this. If you've seen Top Gear specials, then some of this may look familiar to you. And yeah, it should have pretty equal parts of adventure, danger, excitement. Fun. Fun, definitely fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, stay tuned. This is, I'm really excited for this. They knew we were coming. Yeah. Yeah, they knew we were coming, so they graded the road. <laughs> if you've ever played an adventure video game or Mario Kart, and the road consists of crazy bridges, large obstacles, with a couple roadblocks that are situated mainly on the edges of cliffs. Well, at least in the video game, if you drive off the cliff, you can spawn with a new life. In our case, this is real life. And this is a real life risk-taking adventure with little to no room for error. One way to overcome fear is to face it head on, right? Good day. Hello. It's like they've never seen a vehicle on this track before. <laughs> Sí, sí, sí. ¡Ah, Rao! Ok, ¿entiendes? Mira, mira la...
this route is actually a decommissioned railway. And it's only really used by the few locals that live out here and the weirdos like us that want to drive sketchy bridges for fun. Dozens of bridges in various states of repair and disrepair mark this route. And while most of them pose no real danger for vehicles, that's as long as you keep your wheels straight. That's not even the big one. Yeah, we got lots of room on this side. Just keep it straight. Look at that, straight in the middle of the forest. Beautiful pink tree, that's cool. That's gorgeous. The deeper into the jungle and the further along the routes we drove, it seemed the bridges became less and less structural. And while yes, they were built for a train, it'll still get your heart racing. We are at the infamous bridge. We just went over like 12 of these though, <laughs> so this one doesn't seem as scary anymore. No. I wouldn't say it's the granddaddy of sketchy bridges, but the height and no guardrail, like it's up there. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to fly, so I need to put my pilot's hat on and get it done.
Well, that was pretty gnarly. It was actually a little scarier than I thought it would be. Definitely sweating. But, uh, yeah. Wow. Rio Negro Bridge. Check. From the scorching heat of Panama, nearly becoming a tourist statistic in Cartagena, driving south to cooler air, and getting our blood racing on a railway jungle route, the last two weeks can easily be defined as an emotional roller coaster. Our race through Central America to catch up with the seasons has inspired us to return one day. But for now, we have an entirely new continent to explore. It's incredible to say we've come this far already, and the adventure is just beginning as we make our way to Patagonia. Thank you for joining us. I hope we've earned your subscription. And if you've enjoyed this film, you may also enjoy the crazy adventure we had in Costa Rica. We'll see you next time.